Brian from XR Peace, a site here in front of the Ministry of Defence on uh, Victoria Embankment. Um, um, and we're here uh, to make the links between militarism and climate change. Um, we've had 23 people arrested this morning. Um, and right now there's two people being cut out of this car behind us. Uh, there's, uh, they've locked on to some very heavy uh, lock-on tubes that are uh, built into the back seat of the car. Um, and they've been there since 6.15 a.m. I think it's about uh, 9.30 or 10 o'clock now. It's been four, four hours. Um, and it looks like it's going to take a while for them to be able to get uh, removed from there. Uh, earlier today, we also had uh, people lined up across uh, the same location uh, who were arrested uh, holding banners, uh, singing peaceful songs. And then at the far end of, of the street here of Victoria Embankment, there was another blockade uh, with, with a banner, XR Peace banner for life for us all. Uh, and uh, there was a trailer that was brought in with uh, a missile, a mock missile, that uh, was a mock Trident missile. Uh, and they were really like making the links saying scrap Trident and use the resources to address climate change. Our main points that we really want to make are that militarism is a central pillar of the extractive system that's causing climate change. But um, climate change is causing war, and war is causing climate change. The militaries are uh, fighting wars in order to ensure access to oil. The need and, and the militaries are producing 6% of climate emissions worldwide. So we need to address the militarism if we're going to solve the climate crisis as a whole. It's part of the solution. Uh, as, long as, uh, the as long as countries continue to resort to war, uh, we're going to see, uh, as a solution to conflict, we're going to see uh, more and more problems. And actually, it's also a major driver of the climate of the. Uh, it's a major driver of climate change, but it's also uh, a major, a major driver of the refugee crisis. Uh, with and the response to the re refugee crisis is going to become increasingly militarized. So these two issues are inextricably linked. This is XR Peace in front of the Ministry of Defence, uh, and uh, 22 people were arrested at around half past seven, having been here since 6 a.m. And the last two uh, who are locked on to uh, a car, a vehicle, um, are still being cut out by the, um, by the police here. So I'm here as a legal observer to make sure that they are all safe, that it's all being done. And I have to say that the team that is freeing them have done it very carefully and we're very appreciative of their attention to the safety. They have already been told that they are, are being arrested for obstruction of the highway. Um, I will have to check, that's part of my job, my role, is to check if that is what they are arrested for. He, his arms have been immobilized uh, in the car and he's had to undergo being cut free from the car for, for over four hours. They know him to be part of XR Peace and a completely non-violent protester, completely committed to peaceful ways of challenging the way in which military activities contribute to climate destruction. And it is unnecessary. There, it is the choice of the commanding officer whether to handcuff or not handcuff. Therefore, I was requesting that they do not handcuff either of these two young men.
knowing that there are thousands of people dying every day because of the climate crisis. I know that's happening. I know what happens to the farmers. I read about children who really snatched them out of the arms of their fathers. When that happens, the moral justification is for us to act to stop the breakdown of the climate. So the police officers can go and work on other operations. They are having to come and police the disruption and that is due to the government's failure to act. We are having to do this. We are the canaries in the coal mine. We are the fire alarm. The government has not acted for the last 30 years. The moral responsibility lies with the government and our elected politicians. Pollution clouds the sky. Why did you drag? That's the fault, isn't it? You got that on camera, yeah? Um, we need to wake up, we need to wise up, we need to open our eyes, do it now, now. My name is Jenny Jones, I'm a Green Party member of the House of Lords and I'm here today supporting Extinction Rebellion because I can see that if we don't do something drastic then we are going to end up in a very, very bad state. There are already climate change impacts all over the world, including here in the UK, including in the USA, all over the world. And therefore, if politicians don't get their act in order and start listening to people in Extinction Rebellion, we are going to have a devastated world where nobody has a good life. Uh, I, I've always um, watched the police very closely because I think there is a problem between uh, their understanding that uh, peaceful protest is actually part of their job to facilitate, but at the same time, of course, they're under a lot of pressure to clear the road. And so there's always a tension. Extinction Rebellion is specifically peaceful. And I, I, I've gone around now speaking to senior police officers explaining that they have to be peaceful as well.